Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I wanted to review this game for a long time, ever since I purchased it in mid last year. This game is the definition of mind-numbing fun, and it takes the concepts that we've seen in prior Mario Kart games up and beyond what's established. When I say this game has revolutionized the Mario Kart franchise, I'm being dead serious. This game is almost perfection in concept and execution. Well, with a few hiccups. <coughs> Pink Gold Peach. I can seriously call this my favorite racing game of the Mario Kart series, with no buts. And to have a deluxe port of the original Mario Kart 8 on the go is just phenomenal. So I decided, why not? Let's review Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now for this review, I'm not going to be reviewing the deluxe package of the game, but instead I'm going to be reviewing this game as a whole. As I don't have a Mario Kart 8 review on my channel, and quite frankly the more primitive version that was released on the Wii U lacks a butt ton of content, so I may as well just kill two birds with one stone. Without further ado, let's go. I feel before we get into the content of this game, we should look this game from a technical standpoint. The game introduces a brake system, which is the first in the franchise. Good for getting around tight corners and especially necessary in 200cc mode, which we'll get into later. The game also introduces an anti-gravity mechanic on top of the established gliding and water traversing mechanics. Essentially, this can take the player to areas they wouldn't even dreamed of in the prior games. The game also introduces a third mini turbo achieved through a prolonged drift. It's almost as powerful as a mushroom, but it won't get you through grassy areas. The game introduces two new handling options for beginners, with an auto acceleration button and a smart steering option that keeps you from going off the edge of a stage. The game also furthers the established customizable kart mechanic, with over 78 parts at your disposal, each affecting your stat in some way, shape, or form. Part 1 Modes and Characters so straight off the bat we're greeted by a charming title screen of Mario driving across the Mario circuit upside down, already hinting and capitalizing on the game's core mechanics and selling point, the anti-gravity feature. The title screen can change at random too, at one startup you might see Mario, Luigi, Bowser, or even Rosalina which keeps things aesthetically fresh every time you boot the game up. We're greeted here by four modes, single player, multiplayer which supports up to four players, online play, and wireless play which is a newly introduced mode to capitalize on the Switch's portability. We're also treated to some sub-menus for amiibo functionality, which we'll get into later, player stats, a help and hints menu, Nintendo Labo controller functionality, and Mario Kart TV, which is essentially a platform to share your Mario Kart highlights, uh, although it might be noted that if you intend to upload these on YouTube, it'll most likely get taken down. This menu is compact and pleasing to look at. It gives everything in a straightforward presentation without any screen clutter or layout clutter. In the mode selection, we're given four main and traditional modes. Grand Prix mode with speeds of 50cc, 100cc, 150cc, and 200cc. And hell, there's even a mirror mode in there if you want to play the tracks in mirror order. Time trail mode for racing ghosts and establishing track records, which can be toggled between 150cc and 200cc. A versus race, which is a standard racing mode for the game, which was completely absent from the Mario Kart game prior to this Mario Kart 7. And finally, battle mode where you can tackle a free-for-all or a team-based battle on exclusive tracks designed for item combat. We'll get more into battle mode later. Once we select our game mode, rules, and speed level, we're taken into the carrot- Ooh, I'll take it from here! Sarah? When did you get here? I've been here the whole time, silly! We have the established crew and their baby counterparts, as well as returning veterans like Toadette, King Boo, Dry Bowser, Dry Bones, and even Bowser Jr. We also have a few characters from Mario Kart 7 making a return such as Shy Guy, Lakitu, and Metal Mario. But easily the selling point of this roster are the Koopalings. This is their first Mario Kart appearance and they fit in so well. Their full personality and charm and are honestly a good scent to the roster. With the Koopalings, it feels like the roster is somewhat complete. We also have some questionable additions to the roster, what not with Baby Rosalina, Pink Gold Peach, Tanuki Mario, and Cat Peach which realistically just feel like slot fillers more than anything else, which is a shame. But on top of this, we're introduced to some characters from other franchises like Link, the Animal Crossing Villagers and Isabel, and the Inklings from Splatoon. You can change the color of the Squid Kids on a hotbar menu, as well as change Link's appearance from either Traditional Link or Breath of the Wild Link. You can also choose between 9 different Yoshi and Shy Guy colors when you select them. Now that's neat! And finally, you can choose your Mii. If you have amiibo that corresponds with the compatible Mario Kart 8 Deluxe amiibo selection, you can unlock a secret costume for your Mii, which ranges from Mario racing suits to a fucking Sonic the Hedgehog costume. Thanks for helping me, Sarah. Would you be cool having you out with the rest of the review? Sure thing! Sounds like a blast! Sweet! Now on to the kart selection. 
Part 2. Carts and Courses Mario Kart 8 Deluxe contains such a massive amount of unlockable cart parts that will ultimately affect your stats depending on their advantage. The bulkier or heavy the cart parts are, the more fast you'll be able to go. While the smaller and more compact they are, the little handling and acceleration you'll have. Obviously there's more depth to this, but that's basically all you need to know. The cart variety is absolutely outstanding. You can go from a monster dry bowser motorcycle with cushion tires to a freaking Mercedes-Benz GLA with wooden tires. The gliders also have some cool looking renditions, like the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Paraglider and the Waddlewing Flyer Squirrel Glider, just to name a few. It's also worth mentioning that the gliders don't really affect your stats that much, but instead can increase the speed and weight depending on the glider. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can tackle the cake takers of the Mario Kart games. The stages! Landy, why are people just coming out left, right, and center? Nah, I've been here the whole time. I brought Landy with me. Hope that's cool. Uh, yeah, sure. That's uh, that's completely fine. In fact, Landy, why don't you take it away for the stages and cups, huh? Gladly. Mario Kart games are usually packaged with eight cups. Four cups with brand new tracks and four cups for remastered classic tracks. But with this game, we have a whopping total of twelve cups, with the last four being mixed between brand new courses and remasters. This is the largest track count ever in a Mario Kart game, with over 55 playable tracks, not including battle mode. The new tracks have cool and wild themes such as an indoor rave club, a beanstalk cloud top, an airport in Isle Delfino, a Winter Olympics-based mountain slope, and even a dried-out pirate ship ruin. That's not to say that the retro track lineup isn't impressive. Instead of just porting the layouts from tracks in previous titles such as Mario Kart DS and Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe remakes the stages entirely, with HD makeovers and some design changes to make them fit better with Mario Kart 8's gameplay. From the Super Nintendo era, we have Donut Plains 3 and Rainbow Road. The Nintendo 64 era gets Toad's Turnpike, Royal Raceway, Yoshi Valley, and another Rainbow Road. The Game Boy Advance era gets Mario Circuit, Ribbon Road, and Cheese Land. From the GameCube era, we have Dry Dry Desert, Sherbet Land, Baby Park, and Yoshi Circuit. Representing the DS era, we have Wario Stadium, Cheap Cheap Beach, and TikTok Clock. From the Wii, we get Moo Moo Meadows, Grumble Volcano, and Wario's Goldmine. And finally, representing the 3DS era, we have DK Jungle, Music Park, Piranha Plant Slide, and Neo Bowser City. Wow, that's a lot of retro stages! Indeed it is. Really feels like the ultimate Mario Kart. Onto the gameplay now which is more balanced and fun than ever before. Part 3. Gameplay and Items As soon as you get launched into the game, you'll notice the controls. Feel and physics are extremely solid, complemented by such stunning graphic design and visuals. Nintendo really pulled out the big guns for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, producing arguably one of the best looking Nintendo games ever, definitely up there with the likes of Breath of the Wild. The control scheme in Arsenal is practically traditional to the Mario Kart games prior. You hold a button to accelerate, or you can even do it automatically with Auto Accelerate. You can drift by holding the ZR trigger button, and letting go gives you a burst of speed. The power of the boost you get depends on the color of the sparks you let go on. As usual, the harder the drift, the more power you'll get. Mario Kart 8 really amps up the drifting necessity with its course design really capitalizing on the sharp corners. It's that chaotic and frantic racing factor we all crave. With the inclusion of 200cc in this game, it's miles faster than any prior Mario Kart. Braking and drifting is essential if you're not wanting to hit those walls. The Mario Kart experience just feels generally more fun now. With more than just racing being the element of this game, you also have gliding, water traversing, gravity manipulation, all of these enhances the gameplay and really add fun when playing online or with friends. With all of this extra content and gameplay enhancing gimmicks in mind, it makes for some really extremely clever and neat shortcuts. Innovation, a key feature in game design. The CPU in this game feels so much more competent than games prior. When you set the difficulty to hard, you will be in for a challenge. Combine this with the balanced yet varied item system, you've got a fair and fun race at your disposal. Speaking of items, this game has a ton of them, new and old. We have the returning items, banana and triple banana, green shell and triple green shell, red shell and triple red shell, mushroom and triple mushroom, Blue Shell, Ba Bomb, Golden Shroom, Bullet Bill, Squid, Lightning, Starman, Fire Flower, Coin, Feather, which is Battle Mode exclusive, and Boo. For the brand new items, we have Boomerang Flower, which allows three in range throws, Piranha Plant, which chops up players on the race course near you, Super Horn, which can break any inbound item as well as Blue Shells, and Crazy Eight, 
which provides 8 items that you can use at will. Much like Lucky 7, the stronger items can only be used in very far back positions of the race. You will not be getting a star in 1st to 6th place, unless of course Frantic Items is turned on. The structure of the item balancing and the sheer variety can really make for some tension built races. No more is it a struggle to keep up with the pack in last place, nor is it virtually impossible to defend yourself in first place. With the buffing and nerfing of items like the Blue Shell and Bullet Bill, for once this feels like a fair game. Also, returning from Mario Kart Double Dash is the double item box and inventory system. You can store up to two items of any capacity now, by either driving into two single item boxes or a double item box. Now you have double the chance to snag something helpful, which you'll especially need in first place. Let's talk about the multiplayer experience now. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe includes a 2-4 player on-screen co-op, allowing for a Mario Kart Battle Royale. The experience is generally impressive with the only downside being the frame rate reduced to 30 when playing with 3 or 4 people on the same console. However, when it's just 2 players, the game runs at a solid 60 FPS, as it would when you're playing single player. Multiplayer has essentially all the bells and whistles single player would have. It even includes a co-op Grand Prix mode, which hasn't been present since Mario Kart 64. You can also make use of the multiplayer functionality to collect coins to unlock vehicle parts, and eventually the golden kart parts. You'll receive a new part every 50 coins, which eventually increases to 100. When a certain amount of car parts is collected, to get to the rarest car part, you'll need over 5,000 coins in the game. So bringing friends over for the coin grind can really, really help. Don't forget that with the new Nintendo Switch portability, you can now play with another user wirelessly, like you'd be able to do with a Nintendo 3DS. A bare necessity addition to the game, as it really capitalizes on the whole Take your Switch anywhere dealio. Part 4. Battle Mode and Music. Is it time to tackle the battle mode yet? I believe it is. Take it away, Landy. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe keeps up the tradition of having a battle mode, and like always, it's a nice pace breaker from racing. Instead of racing against other players, you're all placed in an arena, with the simple task of making everyone else's lives misery with items. <laughs> These modes are very diverse, and they're different enough to keep a group of friends entertained for a long time. We have returning modes from the franchise, such as Balloon Battle, a large-scale battle where you have to pop other players' balloons with items, Coin Runners, a grind to collect the most coins in the match, and take away other players' coins with items. bob Battle, a colossal, chaotic battle where every item is a bob -omb. You can hold up to eight at a time, with the main goal being to give all the other players an explosive experience. Shine Thief, a unique mode returning from the GameCube era, where the goal is to keep hold of a Shine Sprite for 20 seconds without getting hit. And a new mode joins the fray with Renegade Roundup. Think of it like cops and robbers with piranha plants. It's kind of hard to explain without you experiencing it for yourself, but it's pretty fun alone and even more fun with friends. The battle mode tracks are as follows. Battle Stadium, Sweet Sweet Kingdom, Dragon Palace, Lunar Colony, and Urchin Underpass, which is a Splatoon-themed level. Returning battle courses are Woohoo Town from the 3DS, Luigi's Mansion from the GameCube, and Battle Course 1 from the Super Nintendo. It's worth a mention once again that the feather item is exclusive to battle mode. This item throws you up in the air, and if you go over somebody, it'll count as a hit, so you can use it to steal balloons and coins. It's also great for dodging red shells, so all in all, it's a pretty useful item. I can't stress how much of a joy battle mode is. It brings the elements we loved from classic Mario Kart games and brings it all into one happy and quality experience. It's phenomenal, and it's how a battle mode should be. Speaking of things that are phenomenal, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's original soundtrack is god tier. We have some amazing original new compositions, as well as some revamps and remasters of old tracks. It's like incorporated love into every single note of this original soundtrack. It's refreshing and outstanding. Do give it a listen when you get a chance. I suppose what really makes Mario Kart 8 Deluxe charming and a joy to play is the vast amount of content this game provides, both single player and multiplayer. With all the Grand Prix Cups, all of the coins to collect, Gold Mario, Online Mode, this game provides a lot of single player content and incentive alone. But the true magic of this game is present within the multiplayer. With friends, this game is outstanding and will rest assured provide hours and hours of fun for a duo or a family. If you don't have a Switch and you haven't played the original Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, then I would strongly suggest picking up a Switch and a copy of this magnificent game. Mario Kart 8 is supposed to bring us together. It's supposed to make us happy and full of laughter. It's supposed to supply a general joy. And with this installment in the Mario Kart franchise, we can successfully say that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe will deliver this more than any other game in the franchise. Overall, I'm rating this game a 9.5 out of 10, as it delivers in nearly every single area and more. Even with its flaws like the unnecessary clone characters and questionable stage choices, this game's positives just weigh out the negatives 20-fold. 
But, however, they are flaws and they can hinder people's experiences critically. So for that reason, I can't give it a perfect score. And, uh, that wraps up this review. I'd like to thank you guys all for watching and personally thank my guests, Landy and Sarah, for helping me commentate this video. Their channels will be linked in the description below. Go check them out. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and possibly even subscribe if you enjoy my content. Thank you once again for watching. Gerbil out.